Still not. I'm still not used to just how quick that. Oh, that would intro you just is. get yourself together, man? Well, look, it's a new setup. I'm trying to figure out where everything goes. It looks so much prettier. It does because it blocks out all the mess we still haven't unpacked and all the Amazon boxes that delivered all this wonderful bits and bits. Hold on, that you have. Yes, unpacked. yes, yes, yes. I've been. Everywhere. Don't bring me into that. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. I've been. I've been. You've been to me, at all? I have. Malula Bar. I have. I hang out with with the Shrouds who from up that way. Sure, why not? <laughs> I was, I was in, Do you I was not in remember Co- that song? I was in Coonabarra brand back in, in December. Yeah, so you, yeah. you have I've heard been that everywhere. Song. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Where's my water? Anyway, complete sidetrack. Yeah, complete sidetrack. Why not? So Why not? We, we've had some. Well, first of all, I think we need to you know, thank our sponsor, Check My House Price. Always. Yes. Always. Whenever we need new kit, check my, check my rocks up and goes, all right. Here you go. Have some, have some new kit. And we are doing this for you know. Well, it's well, for it's for the check my community, really, isn't yeah. it? Like, I mean, it's it's for those who are after a house price report. It's for our agents. It's for everyone. Well, it's, uh, it's and we a, sort of demystify. The goal has always been to demystify real estate and what's happening out there and go through it all. And, and I mean, that's the idea of what a house I, price report I does. Really dislike dis- demystify. I, 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 I prefer transparency. I prefer getting rid of jargon. I prefer... I don't know what it is about you, demystify. You realise you actually came up with demystify. That's how you first explained the yeah, point of the podcast. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that I liked the word. It's like moist. Moist. Yeah, I don't like the word moist. <laughs> I've never understood people's dislike for words. Words have meaning. They are you, If they're used correctly, they fit perfectly. No, it's just the way that people use different things it just they use it in, I, I don't like anyone using any word incorrectly even myself well even ointment it doesn't sound like a real word <laughs> that made it sound like it came from a big uh, oinkment <laughs> ointment <laughs> not oinkment <laughs> ointment uh-huh uh-huh see look doesn't sound like a real word does it oh look i'm not worried about that i'm just sitting here going this has got nothing to do with real it really now. doesn't like and and i'm the one who gets in trouble for rabbit holing I'm not rabbit holing. I'm just saying what I don't like. <laughs> Speaking of, I've got someone who doesn't like me. I thought, they, they, to be fair, they inspired the, this episode of the podcast because I thought, you know what? We should really talk about politics and housing. Well, it's not just them. Like I was in the middle of saying, um, we have actually, I, well, I Off have air, had, you were saying. Yeah. I have had uh, discussions with people on uh, different, uh, some of our ads, some of our posts uh, in regards to this particular topic. Yeah. The angle that they were coming from was, you know, the the typical real estate agents are dry, driving up the, co- <laughs> the costs of things and it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Real estate agents have no control over If real estate agents had control over price... And construction, like supply and demand, like they have no, no control over that. If, if they had control over that, you would literally be paying a hundred million dollars for a three bedroom shoebox so that they could collect their percentage of com every time. Yeah, right. Like if if that's if that, like it, that it's getting to a point. Like we've addressed it so many times. It's actually getting to the point where I kind of look at it and I look at those comments and I go, if you're not willing to actually think about this. Maybe uh, you I, should put the sharp scissors away and go back to the safety well, scissors look, before I, you hurt yourself. I think it's because the media has focused so much on real estate agents are greedy, and it's oh, like, yeah. hold on, let's have a look at the funnel. But I think let's okay. have a. They're at the bottom of the funnel, right? Some the purchaser, the purchaser, or the, let's say the buyer and the seller are the very bottom. Right, you've got the real estate agent, but before those people can even get a house, what happens? Before the real estate agent can sell a house, Someone what happens? Someone needs to have to be able to sell it. Well, It needs to be built. It needs to be built. It needs to be built. And that, means that means land. That means land. needs to be released by government. Exactly. So let's go up the funnel and keep on yeah. travelling until yeah. you go, hold on. And, this and actually isn't real estate agents that are doing this. It, this is actually coming from the top of the funnel. Oh, absolutely. And, and we've explained it many times. But it's really interesting because I got it. So the post that caused this ire, right, it was a reel that I created. I put on my TikTok. And I can't even remember what my TikTok 
I think it's John Hellaby or something like that. So follow me if you can find me. But <laughs> yeah. I don't know. My phone's my follow phone's me on. if you Hang can on. find me. <laughs> follow me if you can find me. God damn it. Follow me if you can find me. I think um, that's what it should be. That, yeah. should, that should actually be your handle. Follow, follow me, me if, if you, you can, can find, find me. me. <laughs> um, where is it? It's at John Hellaby, right? So there we go. Where it is. I, I nice had it and right. Nice simple. Yeah, However, at John Hellaby. I reckon follow me if you follow can find me. Follow me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but so I posted that, the, the real, the little snippet, right, where I was talking about how I believed that shelter, food, water, clean water, uh, clothing on our back, it all should be, that's an, that it should be a basic right, and that it, but it wasn't ideal. Like I was saying, this is what I believe, but I also accept that the reality is different to that. Yes. Right? And somewhere along the line, and this, I think it was this phrase that triggered this person, because I said somewhere along the line, the Australian government decided to outsource the solu- solving of the housing supply problem to the private sector. And of course, the private sector is in it for profit like they're, they're, if you own a company you actually have a legal responsibility to act in the best interest of the shareholders at any given time and the most measurable way of doing that is actually profit right now you've got a legal obligation to do that legally i might add welcome to capitalism that's, that's capitalism. capitalism that is the world we live in yeah i accept that that is the world we live in but that doesn't mean my personal ideals and beliefs are aligned with that i just it doesn't mean that, you have that, to that like exists. it but this person <laughs> lost their biscuits right, at me saying somewhere along the line. So it it wasn't somewhere along the line, they said. The LNP are the ones who have privatised and outsourced everything, and I bet a million bucks this dude, i.e. me, voted for LNP before he started podcasts like this. And the fact he does not acknowledge privatisation as a deliberate right-wing neoconservative LNP policy shows that he still likely, uh, still likely he likely still does vote LNP. So his words here don't mean squat. First and foremost, pay up. You owe me a million dollars because the uh, I'm not I don't identify as a voter as a as an LNP as an ALP voter I don't identify by a political party and right. I don't vote by a political party my my belief on this and and this comment forget the person forget their rage forget whatever thing it was that made their day so bad that they needed to come out and and basically call me a political identity mm. right forget that. Because this exists in the world. And my personal opinion is this, like this political identity bullshit is the greatest threat to our democracy ever. Because the moment you identify as a political party supporter, rather than vote based on policy and vote based on what you genuinely believe is best for the country, not because you were told to believe or because Labor said this or Liberals said this, you actually go and read the policy and decide critically thinking well, it comes down what's to best. What is Hang on, best the moment, you your the moment that you go, I'm an LMP voter or I'm an ALP voter or I'm any of that, right? And that's how you identify. You are now manipulatable. You can now be swayed. Your vote doesn't actually mean shit because it's not a critical vote. As in, it's not a critically thought out vote. Look at you just being controversial. I'm Look, to be honest, effort. Because if... I'm a marketer. That is my core job, despite whatever title I hold, whatever company I'm in. My job as a marketer is to get you to buy my shit. Yeah, is to and manipulate I am the going to convince as you. As much as people don't like to be told. That's what marketing is. My job is to get you emotionally invested in buying my product and to believe that my product will, in some way, shape, or form, make your life better. The moment you identify as a brand, and these political parties are just brands. So the moment you identify as, I'm an LNP voter, I'm an ALP voter, I'm a Greens voter, mm. you make it so much harder to vote a different way come election day, which makes you far more likely to swallow whatever bullshit they are going to spit out. And it shuts down a lot of people's critical thinking ability. And it is one of the reasons we are in trouble in this country on a political basis. This country has a huge political issue. Our media is not unbiased. And even the the media that's coming up to counter the mainstream, like the Murdoch media and everything, every bit of media in this country is pushing an angle. And if you identify as one of these political parties' supporters and that it's such a part of your identity that you have to accuse somebody else of being the other party, You're another party voter. It's me against you. You're either with me or against me. The minute you do that, 
The thing you that have I actually find amazing lost with this. your independence and are now able to be moved based on whatever the hell those politicians want. And the one thing that I'm sure we can all agree on is we should never po- trust a politician no matter what colour they are. The one thing that I find remarkable is that with this is the shitstorm that we are currently in yeah. is not because of one particular party. No. It is a culmination over decades. And and of moving towards the extremes. Yeah. Right? Decades. Both parties have, this isn't you know, this isn't since the eighties. This is going back to potentially even our grandparents. Oh, this is it's it's a like long it, way back. Yeah. It, this has been so a is slow. It? Does it have in uh, there? So I'll, I'll come to that in a sec because that's about negative gearing, which I right, thought it was okay. like I, I went to look at where was the somewhere along the line. Because when I made that comment somewhere along the line, I genuinely didn't know at what point it someone had somewhere. gone. It was somewhere in it our history. It was somewhere in our right? history. But let me let me claim my million dollars. Yeah. Let me claim my million dollars. In the last election, which was prior, the last election was 2022. We started this podcast in May of 2023. Okay, I think it was yeah. our first episode or April, yeah. right? So to to quote, and I bet a million bucks this dude voted for LMP before he started a podcast. Like, I take your bet. In the last election, I voted for Anthony Albanese because if you go and read the policies, his policies were the best for small business and was the only policy or the only party that actually had policies to address the supply problem in the housing market. DM me, I'll give you my pay ID and I'll collect my million bucks. Thank you very much. Now, let's look at the somewhere along the line. Right, because I think this is important because it's going to lead where we chat and where we go. I'm actually really concerned about where we're sitting in this country in terms of housing policy, and my spidey sense is tingling. And I think there's some some bad stuff coming that we all need to get out of the I'm LMP or I'm ALP or I'm Greens or whatever. Uh, we need to take those hats it, off, and we need to actually read the policy and look at it on a big picture scale as to what's going to address the supply problem. What's going to address the population problem, the labor problem as a whole? Because all of these things, going to one extreme or the other only hurts us. It hurts somebody. And that always spits back, right? If you look at history and, and we look at, say, peoples, right? And it's, it's the best way to explain this is in a, a beautiful quote that's hard to say. And it is, uh, the oppressed people always rise up to a throw, overthrow the oppressors and then eventually become the oppressors themselves. Mm. So going to the extremes is literally just that pendulum swing. Oppressed, overthrow the oppressors, become the oppressors themselves, right? And then the cycle restarts. Oh, it's if, been, it goes back all the way to friggin' ancient Egyptians. It, it, to the Phoenicians, yeah. before the Egyptians. Yeah, like, yeah. like, this, this the, is well documented. The, the sway happens. The sway happens. So if we want to break this cycle, if we want to break this cycle, we have to stop believing every bit of guff that gets spit out by political parties, by media outlets. We have to look at everything and ask ourselves, what angle are they pushing and what are they not saying? Yes. And then... And when they release stuff, have a look at the stuff that they're not actually putting... Like, and all of this stuff's normally, publicly available. Normally, they're like they get, they have the help from the media to get everyone worked up in a tears about one particular thing, so that everyone's attention is over here. Meanwhile, they're shoving something even dodgier through the system, yeah. so that people are more in, up in arms about this. And it's not until it's through that people are like, "Hold on, when did that yeah, happen?" Yeah, it's look, it's a it's a classic <laughs> PR and, and magician's trick. Look at my left hand, so you don't see the right hand pickpocketing you, right? Yeah. And please understand, every party does this, every politician does oh, this, absolutely. So this is not me going LMP or ALP. No, they they're all just as bad as each other when they want something done. But all in Australia, we are fortunate that all of this is actually publicly available. We can go and find what bills are being proposed. Mm. We can go and find, you know, the the minutes and and everything like that. I've just realised that my phone. Yeah, your phone can go. I don't think the microphone's pick it up. But you know, we can go and find all the minutes from Question Time. We can we have access to this in our democracy, mm. and we can go and research that. Like one of the things that I do, if an article pops up, and I. I don't subscribe to a lot of mainstream media, I must admit. I don't subscribe I don't, to a lot of counterculture media either. I find it really depressing. I, I find it really tiring. And But what I do is when a headline pops up and I go, oh, mm. that's something I probably need to know about, I go and read it, right? 
But then I go and I check multiple news sources for the same content, for the same article. Mm. Because you've got your more right-leaning stuff, which, of course, is your news limit and everything like that. You've got your more left-leading, which is like, I think it's The Guardian and, and things like that. But you've got your central stuff too, mm. right? And so I go and I read across all three lanes of the spectrum because every news article, no matter what angle they're pushing, is based on fact. It's just their interpretation of the fact that frames the angle. Mm. So you can pick up different facts or different interpretations of the same fact, and then you can decide for yourself what the real deal is. Well, normally within that too, they do some, well, majority of the time, have to put their references to how they came across that information. Yeah. So one so of the, you one of the can great actually tricks. go and say, all right, I'm going to go down that rabbit hole. I'm going to go and have a look at that policy to actually read it for myself yeah. to understand because each will – and it's typical lobbyist kind of deal, mm. right? They only sell the main part that they want someone to actually acknowledge – and oh, look yeah. at. Yeah, yeah. But not only that, the one thing that people need to realise too is lobbyists go, here's all of the fruit. Here's all of the fruit basket. And really, Meanwhile, here's all the fruit we want you to have. But then at the same time, the politicians go, oh, you know what? I don't really like that particular piece. I don't like this either. Whittle it down to the point where it's best representing what they want Actually, and it means that the lobbyists get most of what they want in a lot of cases. Yeah, but at the same as, as time, as long as the pockets are deep enough. At the same time, though, they pick and choose as to so that the recommendations and things like that that were originally part of the policy or the legislation, the recommendations for it is literally like not even like a tenth. How many, how many times, how, how many times have we seen like a Royal Commission or we've seen a massive commissioned report or whatever from a think tank oh. and it comes out, it's like we've got 230 or, you know, a massive number of recommendations. They go, cool, we'll see your 230 recommendations. We'll implement six of them and the other 224, meh, whatever. No, like it's, we, only we see it until, it's only until we as the people put pressure on them going... Yes. You said that you were going to do something about this. Absolutely. And the thing is, our democracy is only as strong as its critical thinkers. Now, please understand, I'm not telling you to go counterculture. And if, if the mainstream says it, then it's immediately wrong. No, what I'm saying is everybody's pushing an angle. Every article in this day and age in the Australian media is paid for somewhere along the line, oh. right? And that payment skews the angle. So go and check multiple sources, and make sure you get the different angles and you can decide for yourself what the truth actually is, like what the whole truth actually is. Because they will. They'll, they'll flip it around. And also, media's now, these days, it's based on clicks. They want your attention, so they're going to inspire emotion to make you react. The whole thing, and, and this comes back to putting on a hat where you're, you identify as a certain party's voter or whatever. The massive problem with that is the moment you do that, you take that on uh, from an emotional standpoint, First and foremost, mm. it's not a critical thinking one. And if you get emotional, you don't make good decisions. You don't. Oh, it's the now, easiest way. If, well, they, it's they, the easiest way to manipulate they've it. They've even anyway. said, they have even said in multiple studies that the easiest way to control the population is to fear base them. Absolutely. Well, you remember, mongering. You, you remember the, the analogy, I think it was a couple of episodes ago, I said, if you put black ants and red ants in a jar, right? I, I can't remember where the story yeah, came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you top, put black yeah. ants, you put red ants in the jar. They will coexist quite happily and ignore each other and everything like that mm -hmm. and get along, right? Until someone comes along and shakes the jar. The minute someone shakes the jar, the red ants will attack the black ants, the black ants will attack the red ants, and everyone gets angry at each other. But nobody ever stops and goes, who's shaking the damn jar? Yeah. Right? And we've got to look at this because... The media is pushing an angle. Yeah. Whose angle? Who knows? But every part whoever's of the media, paying whoever's the paying the bill. particular week. Exactly. The media is pushing an angle. We have to think, our democracy is stronger when we think critically, when we stop identifying with, you know, political identity and going, hey, I'm an, whatever, I'm this party's voter, mm. right? We need to read policy. We also need to go and look at it and go, how confident I am I that these particular group of people are incentivized strongly enough, and this is a really important ideal or term, 
incentivized strongly enough to actually follow through on these policies. Yeah. Because it's not about, it's not about, can I trust them? No, it's not. We, we know we can't. Yeah. Right? It's, do I believe that they are incentivized enough to follow through on those policies? Quite honestly, it also is very much like high school. Oh, it, look. Uh, and who's what we the popular see, kid? Yeah. Who's the popular kid? Oh, yeah, no, nah, they're not popular anymore because they said something that the rest of us don't like. Yeah. So instead of going, hold on, they are our leader. We, they have been voted in by the people, right? Instead of going by a popularity contest in the cabinet, how about you actually have some Oof. decent things behind yeah. that as to why they if actually you, need you've to got to be You've got to be able to accept criticism, constructive criticism. Oh, Right, at, at we can't have we can't not be popular. Yeah, and, and, and it's just and like it's, you're never going to be popular. And that's the problem. <laughs> but the reason for this, if you're listening, you're going, "Wow, you guys have have now spent nearly you know twenty minutes on a on a diatribe about politics," and and there is a reason for it. Mm. If you, we look at both at a state and federal level, a lot of and the local. policies and and like a lot of the policies regarding housing and housing supply over the last. They're not Ten doing years. anything. Like I don't care what they think uh, they, that they truly trying to fix things. They're not. They should have been doing something at least ten years ago. Absolutely, minimum. And, but if you look at the policies that they've actually tried to put through in the last ten years, you look at the Queensland policy where they tried to tax investors on properties they own in different states. Oh yeah, they were going to investors, bone people. Investors bailed on Queensland now. There's a lot of people who are probably listening to me saying this, and particularly if it becomes real, going, yeah, screw the investors, kick them out, because that'll drop property prices down. Here's the problem. Our who's population the, is growing at such... Who's the people that such, are going to be buying the houses in order for people to it, It'll be immigrants who are coming into the country who have money, right? As, as well as but others... not all of them who do. Are, but, but hold up. With that policy, it meant less property was going to be built. Yeah. And we already don't have enough for what we've got. Yeah. Oh, but freeing up those houses and getting rid of the investors. The majority of people are one investment property people. So it wouldn't have affected them. No. It would have affected the multiple ones. But it would have disincentivized investors from investing in Queensland, which it did. And a whole heap of interstate investors. Yeah, they, they went, yep, see ya. We're out. We're out. They sold up and went out. Prices did not drop, by the way. No. Prices didn't drop. Prices kept going up despite the fact these investors bailed on Queensland. And then they turned around after, I think it was eight, nine months, maybe a year of back and forth, they turned around and scrapped the policy courtesy of a, a well-orchestrated campaign by the REIQ, right? This is a Queensland government. There's been a lot of dumb policy that has been one-sided, that has been proposed or in some cases gotten through over the last 10 years. And I'm worried. I am worried because we sit at a crossroads where we can actually change something and stop the problem from getting worse and in queensland we have new political leaders we've got muppets <laughs> we well, don't even have muppets because they don't even listen to the people uh, we've, we've got new political leaders who are going to like after anastasia palaszczuk or whatever step down they're going to look to make a splash and where can you make a big splash that grabs big headlines housing that is always a recipe for disaster so i'm terrified I am fully expecting something to come out in the next 12 months before the next election that is going to be unbalanced. And it will benefit one side but hurt the others. And long term, that hurts all of us. Yeah, right? because it, and ta we don't, it we don't actually know. takes longer to get rid of legislation once it's in than what it is to oh, actually get it in. It's, it's a nightmare. So, so I'm really worried there. I'm worried around all the kind. I'm worried of that we are going to see a massive, massive clap back nationwide on stamp duty and that they're not going to move on it. And it has to be a voting issue because it makes too much money for them. Mm. It makes too much, and I'm, I'm really worried about that. And I'm also, I am worried that we are going to see negative gearing attacked. Now, I just triggered a whole bunch of people. Please let me explain before I get called a rabid LMP voter or whatever. Negative gearing incentivizes investors to build new property, as does depreciation schedule and so forth. Mm. Home owner occupiers struggle to build off the plan. They're not the primary market for building off the plan because yeah. it can take two years plus, particularly with labor and supply shortages at the present, mm. right? 
Uh, I do just need to point out here, he's not saying labour as though in regards to the political No, no, I'm, ta- I'm, I'm talking, talking workers, the ability trade, to build. Yeah, la- trades, trade trades labor. Labor. We, we have a shortage of work labour. Yeah. Um, so it could take longer. So that's not ideal for owner-occupiers, mm. right? It does work for investors to buy off the plan. Now, why is this important? Well, in order to finance a development, many developers actually need to get funding from a lending institution, bank, whatever. An investor. Uh, exactly. But in order <laughs> to do that... You invest into my company in order to do what I can, that means I can build what I need to. Exactly. But in well, it's actually more that they need funding, they yeah. need development funding in order to build the houses. Yeah. Right? Well, even just to construct the roads but in and order, the gutters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in order to get that funding... Mm there will often be a requirement that they have to pre-sell a certain percentage of an estate or a development yeah. off the plan. Yeah. But owner-occupiers are less likely to buy off the plan because of how long it takes. They are a smaller portion of the market. Investors are more commonly the ones who will buy off the plan. Mm. So without investors, we can't build new property. Like We, we will struggle to meet our supply targets. Yeah. right? And our supply targets are shorter where we need to be anyway, Yeah. which just creates this yeah it's right? a shit it's a, show. it's a vicious cycle and on that by the way let's let's go back and let's answer that uh somewhere along the line so i went and did the research yes. right somewhere along the line so turns out there's a quick research like i'd have to go to the national archives and and dig deeper into get it exact mm. but uh the basis or or original kind of policy that would later go on to become negative gearing uh, which was a policy that um, allowed investors to deduct losses on rental properties, that came in in the 1930s. Okay. Okay. Well, my grandmother, she and grandfather, they were born 1922, 23. Yeah. So grandparent. So, like, I'm, and I'm 40 this year. But, but hang on, hear me. Like there, there was a really, really good reason for it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll read a quote here. This is, this is an explanation. I got ChatGPT to, to help me out with the research on this, right? Um, the policy allowing investors to, to deduct losses on rental properties in Australia during the 1930s was likely introduced to stimulate economic activity during the Great Depression. By providing tax incentives for property investment, the government aimed to boost the construction industry, increase the supply of rental housing, and encourage private investment. This policy was part of was part of broader economic strategies to address unemployment and economic stagnation during one of the most challenging economic periods in history. If we're addressing unemployment, we're allowing people to eat. If we're building rental properties and allowing losses to be deducted, we are doing our bit to also provide shelter for people and keep rents lower. Now, that hasn't worked in recent times because our population and our need for housing has both increased. Before someone jumps in and goes, hey, the number of houses or the you know percentage of houses incre- built versus the, the population growth has remained pretty much stable. Some of the numbers have, some of the numbers haven't, depending on which microcosm you dive into. Where the key thing is, is that our actual demand for housing has increased by 30%. Mm. We have gone from having 3.6 people per household about 40, 50 years ago to 2.4, and that's consistently dropping, mm. right? So we're having, we need more houses because we have less people in the houses. Yes. Right? So, but getting back to, to this policy, it was about in removing or attacking unemployment because it was a Great Depression, yeah. right? And economic stagnation. Economic stagnation means we're struggling to eat, yeah. right? We're all struggling. A lot of us are unemployed. If you don't know what the Great Depression was and what it consisted of, then go and do some reading. Right. Now, <laughs> bread and butter pudding was an actual stable. Guess when... And, and bread and dripping. Guess when the LMP actually came into being. Wasn't it? I, I want to say that they were like 60s. Mid-1940s. Okay. Right? So the party that most was most likely to have brought it in, so I yeah. couldn't find that specifically without diving into the archives, was the UAP, the United Australia Party. The United Australia Party was formed by disaffected members of the Labor Party 
and their key focus was on combating unemployment and agno- economic stagnation during the Great Depression. The party began to decline in the 1940s, eventually broke up, and key members would then go on to go and form the Liberal National Party. So the LNP. But didn't didn't the na- there because there was a National Party and a Liberal Party, and then they combined. There was. So, so they they go on to form the Liberal Party. Potentially, that's what it was. Yeah. Um, but yeah. From so my knowledge, anyway, whether the, that's right or not. Like it was brought in by the UAP, disaffected members from Labor and so forth. It was not a neoconservative right wing policy. Um, it was a hey, let's make sure people can eat and have a roof over their heads policy yeah. by getting the pr- and look back in the nineteen thirties, the Great Depression, government didn't have no one had the money. No yeah. one had the money except for the private investors who were hoarding and, and holding it. No one had the money to actually address the housing supply problem and the, the shelter problem and so forth. So the government put incentives in place. In a nutshell, wasn't the Great Depression, the, the stocks fell and then people went and got money out of the bank, which meant that the banks didn't actually have the money in order to be able to do the lending. Essentially, I, I'm pretty sure if you look at the real... I'll I'm, need to go and research the Great me, Depression like, now. Um, and the exact and, but if you were to strip it right down to just yep. people raced in because they saw the stocks starting to plummet. Yeah, there was, there was a rush and on cash. And, they went yeah. in and took their money out, which meant that how are the banks supposed to lend anyone money yeah. because there was no actual I will, money. I will, I will look into that I'm pretty sure that it was like that the can. most basic of basic like explanations. Yeah, I, I will go look into that further and look at what course. I know I know it came about after, you know, World Wars and, you know, all there of that. Was there the there was a whole lot of stuff. And, yes, um, but Stock, stocks did plummet quite considerably. I can understand, like, and and this is this is why we, and, and why this episode is this episode. Because they always say to you, say, never talk politics, never talk sport, never talk religion, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm definitely not going to talk religion because I'll probably get sued for the things I'll say Just on the topic of religion. Um, but it, this is why it's so important to never wholeheartedly adopt a political party as part of your identity. Well, people of our age, they've done research into it mm. where they've found that people of our age bracket um, tend to be tend to vote by going, hold on, What's best suited for my yep. household? Who is at the moment is best going to represent my household so that uh, I'm not disadvantaged? Yeah, and that says something. That means that with people each are election, reading policy. people are re- not only reading election, asking questions, but then going, "Hold on, like that dog won't hunt." Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is not suited f- to my particular situation. So therefore. I'm not and, going to and that's for you. and that's what we've got to do. But we've also got to do it with a big picture mindset. I think one of the biggest issues that we have is we are convinced to look at the short term. Uh, um, yeah, they're only in for four years. Exactly, and and I think there's a fantastic quote from a movie, Swordfish, that is um, patriotism doesn't have a four year shelf life. And I think that you know the the four year political system I'm concerned about because it does encourage short term projects and a lack of a long term vision. And I think it's... I do understand why long, they did it. I, I understand why they did it. And, and at the same time, I'm not someone... Like, if I was had the power to extend it, I might only extend it to six years. I, I wouldn't go carte blanche. But I'd also want some oversight and some checks and balances in there. Yeah. Because you can't trust I, politics. I do. I, you know, yeah. Do you, you want to know my name? favorite political joke? What? Oh, why do I'm politicians have glass... I hate this. Yeah, why do politicians have glass belly buttons? <laughs> why? Because their heads are so far up their asses, they need something to see out of. <laughs> well, what I was going to say is my nan used to have a saying and she was just like, politics are so crooked you'd think that they're a question mark. And I it's like, like it. actually, yeah, no. Yeah. Yep. So we've, we can't take anything hook, line and sinker. No. Um, there is likely, I would bet, look, I'll bet a portion when this person a pays up, a I'll, I'll bet a dollars. portion of the million dollars that I'm now owed How much, okay. um, from, from How, one of my, my trolls on, I, on the okay. internet. Okay, I'm going to be a bit of a shit story here. Don't be a, what's her name? The one that pooed on Johnny Depp's bed. 
Amber Heard. Yeah, don't be an Amber Heard and say that you're going to do a portion. Look, if this, if this, <laughs> how person, much of that portion are you actually going to put if forth? If this person pays up, yeah, right, yeah. If this person, what, what am I putting it forty? I've had a mental blank. Yeah, uh, yeah you've had a mental. <laughs> blank. <laughs> right on. Hey, on, what uh, were we talking about? Negative gearing. No, we've got past that. I don't know. I don't know. We'll listen to it back. Whatever it says. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm a man of my word, so I've said it. I know I've said it. I just okay, can't remember I can, what it was can, right now. I can jog your memory. My yeah. nan did say about politicians being as straight as a question mark. Yeah, no, that hasn't or helped. Or as crooked as a question mark. So, does that help? No, it doesn't. It does. That's fine. But, look, I'll, I'll double down. I him. Yeah, we're, I'm messed up now, but that's fine. I'll put a portion of the million dollars. When they pay up, I'll put a more portion of the million dollars to whatever I just said. I'll put the money to yeah. <laughs> I'll but listen to it back I'm and I'll double check. I'm trying to get check. you to commit to a portion. What, I- what size of that million dollars is the portion? What, whatever is left out of change for after buying a house for the kids, like for us and the kids. Right, so there's going to be nothing because it's uh, wait, No, no, we're not, we're not buying a million dollar house. It, it, it might be 50 grand, 100 grand, something like that. When okay. they pay up. I don't think they're ever going to pay up like... I've, I've, you know, despite their, them finishing off, you know, with boasting of their credentials and things like that, um, you know, in, in, in music and, and whatnot, uh, I, I don't think they're making look, that kind of money. Quite, it, it, like, I'm not going to assume, but I just think... Using, I don't think they'll pay up anyway. You, using um, that as a way of expressing your political view, um, my my whole thing when it comes to politics is you do you, wh- do whatever is best for you in your situation, um, just read. Make read. sure you know what's best for you, though. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. It's like, not a... I'm sorry, I'm going to say this straight up. When you start to op- oppress me... In my views, yeah. When you tell me I'm not allowed my views, I think you might want to go and actually have a look at human rights, not just here in Australia, but across the world as to what is human oh, rights. Oh, she's pulling the human rights card. I, I think because you need to look at human rights. If you are actually starting to oppress me and my views, and to discriminate against me because of my views, you might just want to. You, you might want to read. You might want to chill. Yeah. Like, but yeah, look, at the I, end of the day, a human rights, it just comes down to you be a good person and be a nice person to other people and everyone can exist and yeah, co and co I've, I've got a far more blue way of saying it, which we can't say on the podcast. But I think coming back to the, the core topic, make sure that with whatever housing policy comes out. Yes. Right? Read it. Read it. Under, ask questions. Understand of it. Ask questions, but also understand that our housing market is made up of multiple components. Mm -hmm. We have developers. Look, we need developers and builders. We need investors. We need owner-occupiers. We need tenants. Yeah. Right? We need real estate agents. We need property managers. At the end of the day, money makes the world go round whether you like it or not. And, And the best deal, the best policy, everybody gives a little. Nobody gets everything they want. Everybody gets some of what they want, right? And everyone can move form in a uh, move forward in a balanced way. Wait, wait, wait! Are you telling me that we need to come together as a community to work together as a community in order to get things yeah. to change? Is that what you're telling me? Pretty much. I realize I probably need to be put in a straitjacket after suggesting that. Yeah, that everyone, yeah. everyone puts in like, well, like they say. More hands makes lighter work. Yeah, I think I think if we stop seeing each other as the enemy and realize that everybody, like an ecosystem, has a whole bunch of vital parts. Everything yeah. does its job, right? And, and if and you have a majority of something in that ecosystem, it's not if, balanced. If an ecosystem gets out of balance, that's where you have problems. Our ecosystem is out of balance right now because we don't have enough houses. Yeah. Right in the places that people want to live. We've got to address that balance before anything gets better. It doesn't matter. Like, if we go too hard on the investors and we shut them down, there's going to be less houses built, yeah. right? If we go too hard on the property developers, well, less houses built. If we go too hard on the tenants, right, more homeless people, our ecosystem's out of balance. We go too hard on owner occupiers, people who just own their own house, or mum and dad investors, again, like, We're hurting ourselves. I just want to point this out because some people will be like, well, you know, renters. If someone's not renting, then it means that 
someone isn't having that whole point of an investor property of having someone else help to pay for that house and so that someone has somewhere to live. So everything has its place it's, within it's all the ecosystem. Take. It's all balance. But at the end of the day, if you don't have dwellings on any of that, then there is going to be the bottom line, which is yep. there's going to be a massive amount of people who are homeless, which is not fair. Yeah. At and, the end of the day, it's not fair. I don't care who you are, and I know that you don't like the whole. Fair, I'm not a fan of of fair. I, but at the and, same and, time, hang on, it, whoa, that every, sounded bad. Everyone deserves and should have somewhere to live. Yeah, and and just on the note of fair, I wish everything was fair. I do actually wish everything was fair. Where my stance is is none of it was fair. We were never promised it would be fair, and I hate people complaining about it being unfair. I even hate it when I catch myself doing it because. No one promised you it was going to be fair. So deal with the, the cards you've been given and figure out how to win yeah. or figure out how to not lose. But as at the, the same the first time, step. I just look at it and just go, it is not a good thing that we live in this country and we have so many people who do not have this, somewhere safe that yeah. they can call and their that, own. And that was a policy failure over many years and many governments. Oh, decades. Um, and No and, one has actually you know, pulled anyone up to go, no. what the actual hell are you no. doing? And, and that's it. And I think that the whole reason for this episode of the podcast, yes, it was inspired by someone having a crack at me. And by the way, I may have been a little bit of a dick back. I had a bit of fun and, and stirred them up. I may have suggested there was internet access at the asylum. And a few things like that. But I'm like, hey, if you're going to jump on my page and, and start, you know, calling me an idiot by telling me that I'm a certain type of voter and that's how I de- identify, well, you get what you get. Um, but the whole web, I, as much as that inspired this episode, the whole message of this is make sure you read, make sure you understand policy, make sure you're putting it through the sniff test, the bullshit test, you know. And when I say the bullshit test, what I mean is, do I believe that this group of people are incentivized enough to actually follow through on that policy that they've yeah, written. Yeah, don't just write it, I and want action. It's not, do I trust that they'll do it? That's not it. Because it's it's mercenary in politics. You don't politics. want to see words, are you want to they, see actions. Exactly. Are they incentivized enough to do what they say? Because mm. if they're not incentivized enough, they won't do it. Right, and we've seen that countless times. We go, oh, politicians lie and they lie to us and that they election promises lie. are they BS. They just don't do. They just don't do it. They're, they're, <laughs> they're not incentivized enough. Yeah. So are they incentivized enough? Well, to, I'll put this forward, I'll get in and then I'll forget about it. Exactly. So you because I'm you've already got to ask in, that it question. doesn't matter. Um there's housing policy coming. I am sure of this, you know, looking at the status quo, reading the tea leaves as it were, there is absolutely housing policy coming in this country on a state and federal level over the next three to five years, if not sooner. Could be the next twelve months to whatever. Are you worried that it's going to bone us, bone everyone? I am terrified that we are all boned. Yeah. I am terrified looking at, and and this is what I do, I look at the patterns, right? I look at at the environment that we're in. (laughs) It's time for them to royally bone us. And you've got all of the makings of politicians who want to make a big splash, want to show, like... Uh, and and who want to go for cheap votes, and of course the headlines are, are going to go for cheap votes. Like all of it adds up to policy that is the long term effects of are ill thought out, and that any short term gain gets erased over the long term, and we all end up boned. And I am terrified because the writing is on the wall, given what's already been tried and has failed. And they're not going to stop trying because someone's pushing for that and someone's paying for the articles and someone's lobbying for that to happen. So sooner or later, something is going to come through and I and, and there's there's other movements in play behind the scenes that I'm seeing of, of big actors, corporate actors, as, as well as independents and that, that are trying to apply pressure on the bodies and the individuals that stand between us and bad policy. And I am terrified that that level of assault is going to succeed in policy getting through that bones us all. And so that's when I, when I read these comments... 
from this person on, on my TikTok. As much as I had a laugh, I was planting my chili seeds, you know, and, and that, and I had a laugh about it, and I fired back some smart-ass remarks and, and all that sort of stuff. But when I started thinking about it and, I and you know, the gut feeling that I've had, the things that I've been seeing in the industry behind the scenes and, and some of the things that have been said to me by key people and all that, like the alarm bells have been ringing in my head for a while. And it was kind of an opportunity to go, you know what? We, I need to get on a soapbox here. We kind of need to talk about this and we kind of need to go, hey, as depressing as it might be, we need to be really, really smart and unemotional and big picture thinkers with anything to do with housing that gets announced and that, that political bodies are trying to push through because... We can't buy into the headlines. We can't buy into the emotional one way or the other. As a nation, we have a housing crisis. And the only way out of this crisis is a measured approach to restore balance. Yeah. And a long-term vision to maintain that balance. And a lot of solutions that have been offered by political parties and governments to any problem in any industry or any situation where it gets out of balance is to restore balance in the short term and to hell with anybody after my term ends. Yeah. As a nation, we've got to be critical thinkers and we've got to analyze and read it because we have to ensure that whatever comes out to address the housing crisis is not a Band-Aid but has long-term viability for everybody involved in the ecosystem. Renters, homeowners, investors, developers... The workforce who build the houses. Wait, are you telling me that knowledge is power? I'm telling you that we've got to be a hell of a lot smarter as we move forward. And well, the only way that well, you're going to get far smarter more is to actually get the knowledge we, behind We you. need to be so much more informed and we have to, we've got to find a way to respectfully break away from this political identity determining our vote. Yeah. Because... Otherwise, if we keep going down the path we're on, and we're not we're not talking about tax policy and stuff like we're not talking about stuff that yeah that hurts, but we can all kind of figure out a way around. We're talking about the roofs over our heads. Yeah. Right. We're talking about our shelter, one of the one of Maslow's most basic needs. It's a it's a basic human right. But it's need, not just for you right? and me. It's about our kids. It's about our grandkids. Absolutely. It's about our grand. And it's, it's our grandkids, grandkids. Grandkids. Right. We. Whatever policy is coming, whatever changes that are coming to address the housing crisis, we need to go beyond the headlines and we need to make sure we understand the policy, both its short-term impact and its long-term impact and whether it will restore the balance long-term and allow maintenance of that balance or whether it will will swing the pendulum in the short-term and destroy the long-term balance in a way that dooms us all. Yep. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news on that one. But the tea leaves dun, are there. Dun, dun. The tea leaves are there and the writing's on the wall and the words, the things that are being said to me, the things that I'm seeing, the the moves that are being made in seemingly unrelated ways, like all of it, it's all adding up that stuff's coming out. And this stuff could come out and it's amazing. But it'd, sure. it'd be the first time in my 25 years of voting where that happened so good luck to us all may the odds be ever in our favor what a way to finish off the episode sorry to be a downer everybody (laughs) (laughs) the episode there was a joke in the podcast Uh, oh yeah one joke one joke and then doom and gloom and then doom and gloom yeah the sky is falling. The I can I can tell falling. my joke the about the earth is lifting. The earth is lifting. Sky is falling, but have a laugh about. It. Um, I could I could tell my joke about the mermaid and the cow. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That'd get us banned off every podcasting platform known to man. No. <sighs> On that note, where's the button? Peace out. Peace out.